I used to think I could prove just how much I loved my horse when I was a little girl by grooming him so nicely all afternoon long and letting him sneeze on me. But I've learned so much more about my love of horses since then. And the reason I'm talking about horses today, well, they're the subject of my recent and most successful photographic series titled Horse. Now, the success of Horse led me to discover that when you connect to your personal story, it creates vision, which brings the momentum of success and freedom as an artist. And I've been a photographer for 17 years, and I started my career photographing babies and kids, and now I'm photographing high-profile leaders in the corporate and military world. And in the past five years, I've been an exhibiting artist, showing my work in galleries around Australia. So now I'm telling stories about horses through my photography. So what made me create a series of photographs about something that seems so damn ordinary, yet tells the story of my love and challenges with horses? Well, it starts with my father. My father, Angelo, is a well-respected horse trainer in Canberra. And for the past 50 years, he's made it his life's work to understanding horses on the deepest level. And he's taught me how to understand their language. And that's something I never thought I would need in my career as a photographer. You see, my father's depth of knowledge goes so deep it's like he knows what they're thinking. And he can tell you what's about to happen in that paddock over there with five horses who have one bale of hay between them. Which horse is going to be the first to eat and kick and bite the others before it happens in front of your eyes? We always have so many different horses coming and going through our life as my father trains them. But there's only one horse, our family horse Chester, who left a lasting impression on me. I learned to ride on Chester, so he built trust and confidence in me. And he set, he set the standard for me about what a horse should be. Respectful, trusting, reliable. Chester was strong and powerful, but had a gentle presence. My dad, he'd describe him, a real class act, just one in a million horse. But one day, on our farm in Hoskintown, New South Wales, when I was just 15 years old. I saw Chester lying in the grass in a very scary position, so I screamed out to my dad in a panic, who raced over and could immediately see that Chester, he had a twisted bowel, the worst my dad's ever seen. He did everything he could to try and save him, but it was too late. Chester couldn't be saved that day. And seeing him die, I knew I'd lost my friend. And I remember crying myself to sleep that entire following week. <sighs> but the truth be told, I haven't always felt confident around horses. In fact, I could be so nervous if I had to lead one of my father's tall and frisky thoroughbreds. And I never understood why some horses made me feel like this. And some horses, I felt completely confident and in control. But the way I see it now, it's all about leadership. And my dad's always taught me to be a leader and not a follower in life. Because horses are a herd animal, they need a leader to keep them safe from predators and survive. And I know I'm still learning to be a leader with those horses that intimidate me. But when I was creating Horse, the series, I had to show my leadership to so many different horses. But when they came into my studio space, it was on my terms. So I was able to show complete confidence and control. So the horse series all started with an idea. I wanted to photograph individual portraits of unbridled horses inside the telescope building of the Mount Stromlo Observatory, which is now a ruin from the Canberra bushfires. It's this huge round concrete room that has doorways with no doors and huge windows without glass and no rooftop, just open to the beautiful sky. I wasn't interested in photographing horses in pretty landscapes. I wanted to bring them into my world. And these portraits had to represent horses the way I see them and the way I saw our beloved horse Chester. Strong, powerful and showing presence. But was I mad 
to invite a horse to the top of this mountain and turn this telescope building into a photographic studio with flashing lights and expect a horse to stand completely still for its portrait? Of course I was freaking mad. But <laughs> something inside me knew that it might be worth it. So I was so excited to tell my mentor. He was a photographer I look up to as a working artist. He also exhibits his work. And I shared my exciting new idea with him. But he said to me, Grace, I know how much you love horses, but for the sake of your career, don't do it. Think of something else, something more original. I couldn't believe this idea I was so excited about wasn't going to come to life. He basically kicked my imagination to the curb. But you know, as time went on, and I was seeing other photographers doing work that they were personally connected to and having success with. It gave me the push I needed to start this work with horses. Because deep down, I knew that if anyone, and I mean anyone in this world, could do this work with horses, it had to be me. I had the knowledge and the passion for horses. I've loved them my whole life, for God's sake. And I had the skills in photography so it was time for me to make my art a reflection of my world and be my own creative leader. So I needed my dad's help to see if this idea was even possible. And I explained the idea to him and he said, you want to do what with the horse? Gee, there's no doubt about you, Gracie. He always says that when I give him such crazy ideas. And I said, trust me, Dad, it's going to look amazing but all I need you to do for me is get up at 6 o'clock in the morning so you can wash Peppy from head to tail, sparkling clean, put him on the truck, drive him all the way up that long, narrow, windy mountain to the top of Mount Stromlo where I'll meet you, and that's where we're going to do the shoot. And the first test shot with Peppy turned out exactly as I envisioned in my mind. I love how the tones in the horse are mirrored in the tones in the building just so perfectly. And look how he's showing his presence to me. So strong and powerful. Oh, I was so excited with this image. I just couldn't wait to do more and get this new series of portraits underway. But I needed more horses. <laughs> I didn't want to photograph the ones my dad had. So, but what if other people weren't willing to bring their horse to the top of that mountain for me? And then, what if their horses didn't behave as well as my father's do? And then how was I going to find the right people to help me on this shoot with the lighting equipment and stuff that weren't scared of horses? Man, this is a logistical nightmare. But my vision is so strong, I have to find a way to do it. And with Canberra having the most horses per capita of any Australian capital city, it was the perfect place for me to search. So I started a Facebook campaign to find the specific colours and breeds of horses I wanted. But some horses came on the shoot. Well, they weren't like they appeared on their application photos. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> I think it must be like online dating, where people are secretly using pictures from two years ago <laughs> when they were younger and fitter and had better hair. but sourcing the horses was only the beginning of my challenges to creating this series. I'd say photographing a horse is twice as difficult to photographing a kid. For a start, there's twice as many legs to control <laughs> <laughs> because horses don't stand still for long. Or if they do, they're so damn relaxed, they're practically falling asleep standing up. But this is Danny's portrait. And then the horse's ears are moving all the time because they're constantly communicating, showing their emotion and their expression and listening with their ears. So it was vital that every single portrait I took had the ears pointed forward, showing a positive, interested, alert-looking horse. But did you know the ears move independently of one another too? So like, while one ear's moving forward, the other's pointing toward his ass, and I need the ears to work together in a team but this is Wesley's portrait. And then getting the horse's body and the legs into that perfect position 
I'd get it just right. And then the horse just starts walking out the door before I could even take the picture. This is Blue's portrait. Then, oh my God, getting the horse's attention. Well, for a kid, you know, a squeaky toy works just fine. But for a horse, man, we tried everything from rustling the carrot bags to jumping up and down like lunatics to playing horse sounds to even scuffing our thongs along the ground. It got stupid. But this is Gemma's portrait. And then there were the toilet mishaps. <laughs> I didn't even think of this when I first started this project. So the first time a horse did a big, wet, sloppy poo inside the building, all I had with me was a dustpan and brush. <laughs> this is Jerry's portrait. So then a horse named Jock comes along. Jock is a shy stallion. They use him for breeding. And he walked off the horse float and my jaw just dropped because I've never seen a horse like him before. And immediately I was scheming, how can I convince my dad to start investing in Shire horses instead of thoroughbreds? But he had the grand presence of a six foot tall bodybuilder with his chunky chest and shoulders. He stands 18 hands high, which is huge, even for a tall person like me. Ah, oh, you all know I'm not tall, is that right? <laughs> With his gorgeous golden belly on this shiny dark coat and a long, thick, glamorous tail that's almost to the ground, he's posing for me like a true supermodel, looking me straight in the eyes. The perfect moment. Well, until I look a little closer and it appears Jock was way too excited to have his picture taken that time. <laughs> And that, I was not willing to retouch. <laughs> That's enough of that. <laughs> you can see now why it felt impossible with every single horse. Everything had to align in order to capture that perfect pose with the perfect lighting, composition and framing all together in a fraction of a second. I wasn't guaranteed any great results. But with patience, and a shitload of patience, and determination, I was able to get a result like this. Now my vision was ready to come to life after 12 months in the making. But this is when I really started doubting myself and my work. As I'm sure, you know, other creatives out there, you can relate to that. Where you jump on this emotional roller coaster. One minute you feel like your work's not good enough, the next minute you feel like you need to start all over again, and the next minute you just love what you see and you think you're a genius. <laughs> but I needn't have got so caught up in all that drama because the result of sharing horse was so much better than I ever could have imagined. And now the opportunities that are coming my way since the launch in 2016 not only to share the making of this work, but in creating more work like this in the future. You know, I've sold more work in this one exhibition than I have in my entire photographic career. Horse was accepted into the biggest Australian International Photography Festival in Sydney this year. I've had interviews and feature articles in various equestrian magazines and interior blogs and podcasts. I've had invites to art shows. And it's led me to stand on this big red circle sharing my story with you. Because hard work does pay off. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> and believing in your vision is so necessary. And telling your story is worth it. So then what makes Horse so different to other exhibitions I've had in the past? Well, the other work I haven't been as personally connected to, they weren't as successful and no opportunities came from them. They simply haven't come from my heart like horse does. 
So then how do I know that when you connect to your personal story, it creates vision, which brings the momentum of success and freedom? Because when you connect to your personal story, it gives others around you something to connect with also through their lived experiences. And that creates a whole new network of possibility. I know because I have a sense of freedom and purpose in my creative work. And I can honestly tell you, I feel like I've found my true place as an artist. And that feels amazing because I don't have to be like anybody else. I'm my own creative leader. You see, no one can tell your story like you can. Your creative truth, it comes from you, and only you can bring that into the world. Something my mentor said to me was unoriginal. It turns out to be so original because it's my story and nobody else has that. You see, your story, it belongs to you and you belong to your story. So let your art be a reflection of your world, like horses for me. So what's your story you need to share with the world? <laughs>